Good afternoon, my name's Ryan Willard and I'm an architect with Thinking Hand Studio. And where I am today, Central Park, I'm actually towards the north end right near. We've got Harlem over there and we've got the southern parts here. And it's the most fantastic, glorious day today. As you can see, it's 27 degrees. It's, you know, we're in the end of October, middle of October. The leaves are turning the beautiful array of autonomous colours and are falling down gently into the park and creating the most beautiful visual display of foliage um, and I was thinking about a question that somebody asked me in the UK about how to find a plot of land and in the United Kingdom it's very difficult there are various um, search engines that you can look for various programs on the internet like UK find plot um, and websites that you can use to try and find a piece of land but it's quite an ordeal it can be very very difficult and here in New York finding land is you know, in Manhattan, you haven't got a chance. I honestly don't think to find a new plot of land in the center of Manhattan is very, very, very fierce. I mean, you've got some of the fiercest real estate on the planet happening here. I mean, Manhattan itself as an island has kind of expanded slowly as they, you know, the Dutch used to put landfill around the corners and the Hudson, the river itself has actually got narrower um, as a result. But what New York has, which uh, the UK doesn't have, or which America has, is, is vast, vast amounts of incredible, untouched landscape, perfect for building those dream houses. And last week I had the good opportunity to go up to Peekskill, um, which is not even, it's just barely entering into the Hudson Valley. But my goodness, 20 minutes outside of a Harlem on 125th, going north on the train, and you are in some of the most phenomenal landscape. And I'm talking landscape that hasn't been touched for millions of years. The river, the Hudson uh, River, is named after Henry Hudson. And I'm pretty sure that what he saw in the 17th century is exactly the same as it is today. So it makes it a little bit... He's got different... different thing to play with here, um, at different opportunities. In New York you're going to be very very constrained for land, but then you've got the beauty of the Hudson Valley very nearby. So in Manhattan you're going to be very constrained and very difficult to find a new plot of land to buy, buy a new building. However, the Hudson Valley, which is kind of echoes the, the visual look of what's behind me here, you know, with some of the prehistoric schist rock and the beautiful foliage. Um, there's an array of different types of landscapes that you can purchase and I was having a look and obviously waterfront property or land on waterfront can range anything from $250,000 and if you want a property on there you know you're talking about a few million but if you want to go more further inland you're talking about $30,000, $40,000, $50,000 which makes building something very very um, realistic you know if, 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 if you, even if you don't have much funds um, but what's interesting to consider there is what the parameters are for helping you choose a plot of land in that landscape. So I did a little bit of research looking around and some interesting things to consider when trying to buy a plot of land in the Hudson Valley um, is it's not as straightforward as you might hope even though there's acres and acres of land. A lot of it is rural and a lot of it does not have access to public sewers, uh, water infrastructure or anything like that and actually being able to buy and build anything on the land may not be appropriate or feasible at all um, and certain elements like if you've got sulfur in the water and other noxious elements that might be that's also going to uh, lower the price of the land and building that infrastructure yourself you know building septic tanks and waste disposal and things like that can be extremely expensive the second thing that you want to consider when buying a piece of land in somewhere of outstanding beauty like that, of course, is the views. What do you want to be looking out onto? Do you want waterfront? Do you want to be able to have you know, glorious views across the valley? Um, and of course, you know, the places that are going to have more views, the price will, will, will go up. But you've also got to consider how to maximise your land in order to create architecture or create a home that maximises and gives you that vast sense of openness, how you can capitalise on the beautiful what you views. What you're going to understand is the easements on the site that you're looking at. Now the easements are kind of rights of ways and access uh, into your property or to neighbouring properties. Um, so understanding who can use what and what bit belongs to you and whether that's allowed to be used by somebody else is very, very important to avoid any nasty surprises once you've purchased the land. 
And finally, having a bit of an understanding of the soil composition in the area. These are things that you might overlook and not think about, but things like soil composition will affect your ability to be able to build foundations, it will affect your ability to be able to build septic tanks and things like that, um, which can have quite a, an effect on the overall construction cost if you're building something from scratch. So, I hope you've enjoyed that. I shall leave you now and we will be returning to the topic of the Hudson Valley uh, where I'm going to be exploring some of the vernacular architecture that exists there. Um, and I think the, the valley itself and the river has really sort of captured my imagination and my heart. So, we shall be exploring further and showing you other ways to build in this fantastic area.